revitalisation of the, the laneways has been led by bars and artists. And in a lot of cases, it's been artists setting up these bars. Now cheap liquor licensing means there's so many DIY bars around that choosing between them has become an industry in itself. According to these bar secrets of Melbourne, the uh, culture here is going off. There's like live music bars, jazz bars, rock bars, manga, anime, something or other bars. There's even video art bars. I mean, what the hell's a video art bar? This is Horse Bazaar. This is actually one of several video art bars in Melbourne. Here you can drink alcohol and subsidise Australia's video art making community at the same time. These guys have fitted it out, built the furniture and even invented this impressive looking wraparound video wall. It's just, it's just really striking just to have an image or, or a video or an animation that wraps all the way around the room. Like you know, people are used to this little square box and to actually be sort of partially surrounded by it really it can be quite a powerful thing. It can be a party here and yeah. you, know, you, you really completely reshape how the room feels by what's being projected onto the walls. Who are the people that make these videos? Where do these come from? Local artists. Uh, we've sort of been cultivating relationships with a number of the local local unis, RMIT and uh, VCA, Melbourne Uni. I like it because it's sort of a, a quite sort of rough and simple. You know, it doesn't grab your attention all the time. You, you can sort of zone in and zone out. It's sort of bits of paper that are just scanned in and and sort of animated within the software. So it's, I think it's, it's quite clever. What about your toilet? What's the story? Um, we've got a reprojection urinal. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we just project video on the urinal to sort of toy with men's psyche as they're relieving themselves. <laughs> and do people make videos specifically for the urinal? But I, just, I just got an email from a Swiss artist a couple of days ago who wants to make something for the urinal. So. You're making money off the bar to fund your video habit, you're making money off your video habit to fund your bar, what's the, how does that work? Primarily the, the selling alcohol is the idea, is that that's, that's what funds the interesting cultural projects. What would you get on if you had to pay a couple of million dollars for your liquor licence and you had to, you know, get the right to 30 poker machines and... The only poker machines we have here are sort of our digital ones that they don't really bring that great a return. Oh yeah, they work. They work. I, I suddenly yeah. feel at home. I'm yeah. from New South Wales. Right, okay. This place suddenly feels familiar <laughs> to me. I... Yeah. Well, cough up. <laughs> and that's where the money comes in. Creative spaces like this happen in Melbourne because the costs and the risks of doing something like this make it viable. In Sydney, or as I discovered when I tried to do something like this in Newcastle, this kind of creative energy is blocked by money and poker machines. Performance spaces, video art bars, or even a lot of creative uses of empty shop fronts, well, they're way out of the do-it-yourself league. Everybody talks about how um, hard it is to get a liquor licence and how they are attached to the poker machines and it really just sort of makes it impossible for, for guerrilla startups or people sort of bootstrapping to, to, to get there. You have to have, be well funded and, um, and, and that sort of often would sort of quash any sort of creative endeavour having that, that amount of money. It's not just places to have a drink that we're talking about. Even if you've never been to a place like Horse Bazaar or visited Melbourne's graffiti-covered laneways, all of this DIY cultural activity fuels a much larger economic chain. <laughs>